Hello, my Niger people. Welcome to my telly. I mean, my TV show. This is actually my first video, and I want to make it count. Actually, uh, the main reason why I'm making this video today is about the troubles we have with the Nigerian embassies all over the world. Yeah, Nigerian embassy is causing a mayhem to both its citizens and even to the outside world. I mean, can you imagine what they do? Okay, uh, let me tell you guys this, yeah? I was born and bred in Nigeria, Lagos State to be precise, okay? I was born and bred in Nigeria, so it means that Nigeria has all my datas from when I was born to when I grew up, went to primary school, secondary school, university, they have all these data in their system. And that happened when I was trying to get myself my first Nigerian passport ever. Okay? Now, in the UK, I'm a British citizen as well. Okay? But I can tell you that the British does not have as much information as Nigeria does about me. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you guys something, right? This is my Nigerian passport. Okay? This is my Nigerian passport. And this is my British passport. Yeah. Check out the quality. This is solid. You can tell that this will cost more money to make than this stuff. You know what I mean? This is quality. This is like carbon paper. In 2012, 2012, I was traveling to Nigeria and uh, my Nigerian passport had about two weeks left for it to expire. In the, in the airport there, one of the uh, immigration officers took my Nigerian passport and made a mark on it. He made a mark on it saying, yo, your passport is almost expired. You cannot travel back without renewing this passport. He now made a mark on it. That mark will make anybody that sees that passport want to have a look and see what's wrong with the passport to know what the complaint was. You know what I mean? It took me like hours. I had to pay an agency. I had to wait on the line. People were there for two hours. But luckily for me, like God so kind, I saw one of my classmates that I loved the, the, the uniform. It was nice. So she had to go into the, uh, into the office and then she brought out my passport. And I was so happy. You know, after I've paid 28,000 pound, no, not pound, sorry, 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 not pound, 28,000 naira to the agency, and then I had my passport sorted out. You get what I'm saying? So, I took the passport, and I was so happy. I came back to the UK, everything was fine. Now, re uh, the next time I wanted to renew my passport after five years, that's trip 17, I was supposed to renew my passport again because it was five years. So, I went to a uh, Nigerian embassy in London, and then I, I had to register. They took my fingerprints. They did everything. Even though I've paid money from online stuff, I had to do all these things. I had to travel all the way from Manchester to London because I don't live in London anymore. It's quite a crowded place. So I had to live in Manchester. It took me four hours to drive down to Manchester, uh, to London. Don't forget, some people live further back. So it might take them six hours, seven hours. Even some of them has to lodge in hotels. But for me, it took me just four hours to drive down to London. So I did my fingerprints and did everything. They never told me when my passport would be ready. They just gave me a letter uh, in my one of the forms I was given. They put they, they put this uh, what's it called a date saying that you have to check on our website if your date falls in between the ready to collect, then you can come down. But estimated time to wait was three months. Three months to get a Nigerian passport. That's not all. That's not all. So what happened? I had to go to uh, the embassy after three months because I seen in the embassy that my passport was ready. I got there. What happened? These guys told me they were closed. Right? I got there for 12.42. Even though I was there for 12, but you know in London, it's very hard for you to see a place to park your car. So I was just looking for a place to park and then most of the car parks were filled up. So I waited for somebody to drive out and i packed in i put the money in just to make sure i have enough time to cover my car now and i had to trek all the way from where i packed my car into the embassy what happened they told me i was late 
I said, please, I need to get my passport. They said they couldn't do anything, that they have lots of people inside and that they could not, you know, accommodate me there because it's all crowded. They had to send me back to Manchester. I, I felt like crying my eyes out, you know. I had to drive back all the way to Manchester, left my passport. The next day, I did the same thing, four hours drive back to Manchester. This time, I left a little bit more early. So I got there for 10 o'clock. It wasn't open. Yeah, the embassy was not even open. I was waiting till they all came outside. I think after some time, you start seeing the staffs coming in and out. You know what I mean? And then they said, okay, you guys can come in. So I went there and then they gave me my passport. They gave me my passport. It took me, uh, they gave me a submitted time of three months, remember? But it took me four months, four months to get my Nigerian passport renewed in London. Okay, renewed in London. Now let's check this out. Nigerian passport took four months. Yeah, and they gave me estimated time to wait was three months. Now this is the renewal of my British passport. Okay. If you apply for to renew your passport in the UK, your British passport, yeah, they will send you a after you go to the post office to send your application. All you need to do is send in two passport photographs. And then your application form, right? That's it. Now, I sent my, uh, my application form to the post office. And then the post office told me, oh, as soon as they receive your application, they'll send you a text message saying they've received the application. And then when they'll send it back, they'll send you an uh, a text message again saying uh, your application has been sent. Uh, your, your passport is ready to collect that they're going to send it to your address through this uh, agency called DW Delivery. I'm sure most of you know about that. The UK passport office, they use DW Delivery. Okay, so what happened? Now, they gave me an estimate of 28 days to get my British passport back. Okay, 28 days was what they told me that it would take up to in case they find out any, any faults or whatever, but I should expect my passport to be ready in 28 days. Remember, this one, three months estimate. This one, 28 days estimate. Now, guess what? In eight days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, I heard, I saw, I, uh, I got a text message from DW Deliveries, yeah? And then they said to me in the text that, Hi, uh, your passport is ready for delivery today. We'll attempt to post it through your door. And I was like, what? 28 days? Seven days. So what happened? I heard a knock on my door and my passport, not this, nah, not that one. This passport was sent to me, was dropped in my doorstep. Now, get this clear. I did not go to the British Immigration Office. I did not go to the British Immigration House. I did not go to the Passport Office. They did not see me face to face. Yeah? And my passport was brought to my doorstep. The British government have not got enough information about me compared to what the Nigerian government has got. And I got my passport in eight days. So what do you think about Nigeria? Now somebody went to Nigerian embassy in, uh, in London and vandalized the whole stuff there. Do you blame him? Can you blame him for doing that? You don't know how frustrated people are all over the world because of Nigerian services. It feels like you're still living in Nigeria. Ah, what? Nigeria again? Why? Anyways, uh, this is my first video actually and uh, I had to make it because I was a victim of what happened to that same guy in, in uh, what's it called, in London. That's why I had to make this video and I don't support violence in any way. I mean, there are, there are ways you could have sorted things out, but to be honest, Nigeria needs to improve. Nigeria needs to improve. I love you all. I know Nigeria is hard, but please, you guys should take Nigeria easy. I know, I, I support, listen to me guys, yeah? 
I support that any Nigerian, any Nigerian that has the opportunity to travel abroad, please, I beg you, in God's name, travel. Travel abroad. Don't go through the desert, no. Because people that suffer abroad, people that lies a lot abroad, are the ones that are illegal. If you don't have a stay in the country, if you're not documented abroad, you will suffer. There is no way you can enjoy your skin. You even somebody in Nigeria will look fresher than you. You look like a fuck. I don't want to swear. I'm sorry about that. Any, anyways, you guys don't worry. I don't want to take much of your time because I know this video is just like my first video. I don't want it to be too long. But my next video, I'm going to tell you guys a lot of things about Nigerians that lie in the diaspora. And also, I'll be driving into town. I'll be showing you guys how people live abroad. You see Nigerians going to work, coming back. You see Nigerians with their big cars. You see Nigerians walking the streets. You see people that are well-to-do and some that are not well-to-do. We have a lot of them in this country. But there is no way you'll be documented and then you suffer. It doesn't happen that way. Okay? It doesn't happen that way. So until I come your way again, I wish you guys the best. I pray for your family. I pray that you stay safe from the bandits, from the headsmen, from the Boko Haram, from the kidnappers, arm robbers, and you name it all. I pray that none of your families will get involved in such stuff. And for those families that are involved already, I pray that God will give you the whole support for you to survive that pain. I know how bad it is. I wouldn't like any member of my family to be killed, to be beheaded, to be kidnapped, or anything like that. But for those of you that it's happened to, I, I offer my sympathy. I'm sorry to you all. I'm very, very sorry. So what I'm going to say to you guys, just keep tuned. Stay tuned to my telly. Stay tuned to my channel. This is the Niger boy, Tilly. The real Niger boy, man. Forget about whatever, 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 whatever. I am the Niger boy, and I'm going to bring it to you live as sweet as it can be. Stay tuned. Subscribe to my video. This is my very first video. Subscribe to my video. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think about the Nigerian embassy in London. Tell me what you think about the Nigerian embassy in Toronto, in Canada, in Germany, in Australia, all over the world. Tell me your experience. Leave the comment down below. And then in my next video, I'm going to read out some of your comments, and I'll get back to you guys. You know what I mean? Take it easy.